Alright guys, what's going on? Tom here from Dread Labs. Uh, we're gonna do some fun stuff today on the live stream. So yeah, let's let's just get into it, I guess. Um, let me just clean my desk up here. Uh, as you can see, my setup is a little bit different from uh, what you might uh, are used to uh, when we do the, um, tutorials or other live streams. And that's because I'm sitting at a custom desk here uh, in front of my actual desk. Um, <coughs> And that's because uh, we're gonna do some sketching today. And for this, I don't have enough room in front of my laptop. So I set up my uh, mobile phone here, as you can see, uh, to record what I'm actually gonna draw and sketch out. Um, so yeah, um, in the sidebar, you can already read a little bit about, about what world building is. Um, but let's just uh, explain it for a little bit, I guess. Um, world building is a technique that I uh, learned in my minor in transmedia design at Fontas Academy of Creative Industries uh, and it's a way of creative development and brainstorming uh, that's mostly used by writers uh, and a great example of this is uh, the world of Harry Potter for example um, so what I'm going to use world building for is I'm going to create a fiction fictive world a fictional world um, revolves around Dread Labs. So uh, basically we're gonna create a world, um, the world of Dread Labs or the universe of Dread Labs, if you will. Um, <clears throat> and we're gonna make up all these different kinds of stuff, you know, like uh, what does the world look like? What do, do, does the world have cities or maybe like wildlife or uh, what the people, uh, the inhabitants of the uh, Dread Labs world look like? Um, so yeah, basically we're gonna have like one cool creative brain uh, brainstorm session uh, with some uh, sketches and stuff. And what, what world building is really useful for is um, all the stuff that we're gonna make up today. We eventually are gonna use for uh, for actual uh, campaigns, for example, uh, and that could be a concept for a new merchandise or clothing collection. Uh, that could be. Um, Maybe like a musical album, or uh, I don't know, a poster series, or uh, I don't know, uh, an animation short, or um, yeah, whatever you want, basically. Um, so yeah, I hope that you guys, uh, if you're watching this, uh, you'll learn a bit about what why world building is really fun to do uh, as a creative exercise, and how useful it can be for you as a creative as well. <coughs> um, so yeah, I think we, we should just get started, I guess. I've got uh, 20 people watching right now. How's it going, guys? How are you today? Um, so yeah, I wrote some stuff down in my notebook. Um, and what I really like, uh, would like uh, for Dread Labs as a world uh, is that it would be kind of dystopian. So we'll have this world. And basically, uh, this once was like a world where it was like, like we are living right now like super modern and and things were all good and well but then something happened which ruined this world so, uh, the world got broken for example i don't know uh, maybe it was because of a war uh, maybe it was by because of um i don't know people left the left the world of dread labs uh to, to go to other planets or something um so yeah, um, uh, how would you guys feel about that? And uh, it would be really cool to why I wanted to do this on a live stream uh, was uh, basically to have you guys' input as well. <laughs> yeah, because the Fire Nation attack, attacked, for example. Uh, so it would be really cool to to make up stories uh, from this world with, together with you guys. Uh, so for example, uh, an idea that I had was that it was like this big desert and in this desert there were, were actual uh, underground laboratorium uh, la labs basically um, which are the actual dread labs and scientists there are uh, researching uh, the phenomenon of uh, I don't know maybe like a, a fictive like superpower uh, that derives from uh, from mental health illnesses or something you know um, so yeah, that was kind of the first uh, like little draft that we uh, that I had in my head. So uh, I, I guess we can just start with that. And if you guys have any cool ideas or input, or uh, let me know in the chat, and we'll uh, we'll try to get it involved. Because for example, le what um, let's say this 
let's say this de desert idea uh, would get converted into a uh, clothing collection for Dreadlabs. Uh, then it would be really cool to have you guys' input uh, like worked into this concept of this clothing collection. So uh, it will be kind of like a collaborative uh, uh, yeah, collection, I guess. So yeah, that's why I wanted to do this in live stream. So yeah, let's just uh, sketch out uh, like a desert. And in the middle, I want like these, this entrance. It's like kind of uh, like it's drowning in the sand, I guess. And it's shut down and shut sealed. And I guess these these labs. Um, they probably had, didn't have like uh, I don't know, had contact with the uh, the outside world for a while. Like the, the the labs itself has been sealed shut, so nobody would be in there, or I guess the people that would be in there um, are aren't going outside, and there is not no one actually coming in. So we got a little desert here. I don't know, and I feel like um, I, I always like it when in science fiction uh, the sky has like multiple um, multiple moons or multiple planets in the that you can actually see. So that's something that I really like about like. So I want I want the sky to be filled with planets, I guess. And I guess we can do something else for these planets as well, like like their interplanetary travel is possible in the world of Red Labs, I guess. Uh, also, guys, uh, can you hear me good enough? Because uh, yeah, my mic's also n not in a place where it's uh, normally where it normally is, I guess. So yeah, uh, let me know in the chat if you can, uh, guys can actually hear me. Or do I need to speak louder? Also, guys, I, I'm not a professional drawer. Um, so, yeah, <laughs> is, and besides that, this is also just a sketch. Um, what's up, Jordan? How are you? So, yeah, um, we have this little, like, I, I, guess, I guess the labs are like a bunker. Um, just uh, I don't know if it's visible for you guys. I guess the sketch is not that. Yeah, it's it's a little bit invisible, I guess. Let's see if I have a like a marker that I can use to make it a little bit easier to see what I'm actually drawing. <clears throat> so I think this is better, right? So guys, um, let's say you were in this desert and you would find this door shut um, and there would be a way to come in, you know, like there's a way to to actually uh, enter this bunker for some reason or uh, maybe uh, like explosive with you or whatever, uh, that's all up to you, but uh, w what would it look like when you enter this lab? Let me know in the chat. Would be cool to uh, to have like a lot of input from the live chat, so we, uh, yeah, so we can really get this thing going, you know, get like a brainstorm session, I guess.
for yeah so really really cool to have it like super clean and high tech yeah so uh what probably would have happened is uh because it's all sealed shut so well um yeah there will be like a lot of uh i don't know uh like i i don't know if you guys have seen stranger things but when they in season three when they enter like the um uh, what's it called like the, the 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 Russian uh, hideout underneath the Sorkor Mall? Like they, they they have these like super long tunnels. Uh, that's kind of what I feel like, and and it would be indeed really cool to have it like really clean and high tech, uh, as a really big contrast in comparison to what's outside. So uh, let's see if we can dr draw like a hall a hallway. There will be like these lines uh, going through the side where I don't know some weird like fluids would uh, go. All right, like toxic waste barrels would be cool as well. Yeah. So we had some barrels over here. See if I can find my eraser real quick. And so a really cool thing about world building is, for example, let's say that these uh, these barrels contain like a toxic liquid of some sort. Um, what would be cool is uh, if you could if we could think about like uh, what what why is this liquid toxic and does it have something to do with the rest of the this planet like. Uh, or is it some weird thing that they have experience with and what does it do what does it aff affect you uh, when you like on your body or is it something that you make like weapons with or uh, yeah that, that's a, that and so like just drawing the hallway of a lab can turn into uh, I don't know making up some weird like uh, scientific element that we can use for example for uh, I don't know, a sample pack maybe for music producers or uh, I don't know, like I have these necklaces from uh, that I made with like uh, plexiglass uh, w that are also coming to the uh, Dreadlabs web shop I don't know when but yeah, uh, and for example these necklaces could be made from that uh, liquid for example, you know so that's the cool thing about world building really that you can if all these different kinds of uh, things that you you can use as a, you can all you can always use it in. Uh, I don't know. I always like it when like a brand has like a, you, even if it's not fictional, a story to tell. You know. Uh, so, so darker hallway. Uh, give me some more high tech stuff. Maybe like some some weird liquid would flow through here. So let me finish these barrels up. Let's see if we have like a color uh, we can use. see if we have like an icon that we can use for the for the barrels so let's just go with like a triangle I 
no, I, I was just thinking of like, would there be windows? But there wouldn't really be windows. Maybe like, like some doors or something. You know, like, uh, I don't know, where there would be like experiments done or something. Yeah, it's it's uh it's definitely like a really good idea. Yeah. And also, it's just really fun to do, you know. Like, uh, I've been, I, I've had a lot of work in the past few weeks. Um, when Creatober finished, uh, and I was done with all the everydays, I guess. Um, I had like two, nah, more like four really big uh, freelance jobs, and they were really fun. But it's nice to to have like something that you can do, uh, uh, while not working at the looking at the screen, and also. Because world building is this uh, this open, I guess it's just so nice that um, uh, there's no like uh, there's no like specific point where you need to go. You know, like you don't have to finish this hallway on purpose or something. And if you're stuck on doing this hallway, you can just go like, okay, what would the city look like on this planet? You know, it's a uh, it's really relaxing and also really nice exercise for the creative mind. So if you would go, to well, it would be nice, yeah. So what? Uh, and and if you go insane, like what? Um, like would you mutate or uh, I don't know? Like uh, what kind of effect would it have? Uh, like how would you go insane? Like um, maybe an odd question, I guess. But um, yeah, it's a. Uh, it's a really nice start and uh, yeah I'm trying to think a little bit deeper than than insane like um, yeah I don't know maybe mutation or uh, I, I don't know I, I dreadlips is kind of all about like mental health a little bit so maybe like uh, the, the more depressed you are the, the, the more insane you go or something like that you know so um, Uh, any tips for Cinema 4D as a beginner? Um, so the way that I learned it last year was, um, well, obviously there's like the big Chrome hype. So the first thing I wanted to know is how to make a Chrome material. And I got this tutorial, for example, from Fatu Tutorials. And uh, basically I just followed every step without having any idea what I actually was doing. Um, and I did this with like, five to ten other tutorials um so and all by different like uh people on youtube and because of this uh and then like start slowly you're you're starting to see like their workflow pattern and like i'm starting to realize okay this is the material step and uh, this is how reflection works or uh oh i can manipulate an object by doing this or you know like um and that's the way that I uh, kind of started out. Um, I also have like a recorded live stream. You can find it back on YouTube um, where I uh, do the basics of Cinema 4D and then create some visuals. Um, and I think it's a two hour video, but I think the first half hour or something uh, contains like a lot of the, the basics. Uh, so there might be a way to get started. Um, it's a little bit also like uh, directed at graphic designers. I don't know if you're a graphic designer, but um, yeah, it's, it's, I, I did it especially with a graphic designer in mind since I'm a graphic designer myself. But um, All right, uh, so... More depressed equals more insane. Yeah, so yeah, this is really cool. Uh, it's just so much fun, you know. Like we already have like okay, uh, this certain color or something uh, will make you insane if you uh, have mental health issues or something, you know. Uh, and yeah, maybe maybe this this could be like something that we can use for a mental health awareness campaign or something, you know. So yeah. Uh, 
have I ever used Blender for? Yeah, I've used Blender um, uh, when I wasn't, well, I'm still in college, but in my second year in college, uh, we learned Blender a little bit, uh, the modeling basics to uh, basically learn how to do 3D printing. And then I've basically never touched it before once I got Cinema 4D. Um, so yeah, basically, uh, basically that. I guess um, it's it's really easy to use as well, and it's free, of course, which is nice. Um, but yeah, I I feel like Cinema 4D is just a little bit more uh, user friendly. All right, so now that we have the hallway, I guess it's time to. Um, Ooh, walls with liquid effect. Um, it's a shame that I don't have like. Uh, so if if I would drag this into Photoshop, I would like try to make it a little bit more weird. Um, ooh, slows down time. What if altitude makes you go crazier? The higher you go, so you're fine in the ground and bronco. Ooh, right. So, ooh, these that's a really cool idea, man. Um, so let's just say there's the ground. Here's the desert and stuff. I don't know if you can still see it. Um, so yeah, the higher you go, the more crazier it'll get because this uh, the cloud is filled with like that. Uh, with with basically their clouds in the sky super nice cloud stone nice um, and these clouds contain the liquid that, that they're actually storing because it has also like some good value but to get the f to get food and to get um, to get this liquid they need to get they need to get out of the bunker bunker I need to get out and get a, get up, basically. So, um, okay, what would be a cool way to uh, to to to? Uh, I I feel like there should be like a, a population of like insane people that are living below above the ground, and the scientists have, have like found out a way how they can control those people and get, and uh, so there are like people living above the ground. The scientists who are here, for some reason, they fo they found a way to make these crazy people get up here, get like the liquid of the clouds, and then bring it back and store it into uh, like a I don't know, and 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 they brought it back to to the scientists I guess. So these. Um, yeah, I like the I, li I like how uh, I get inspiration from the comments here because that's or from the chat here. That's really cool. So um, uh, yeah, there's a um, let's see. Okay, so there's a way for these scientists uh, to to manipulate these crazy people. So the first thing that would kind of be cool, I think, is uh, let's sketch out these the, what these scientists are and sketch out these crazy people. So, uh, for example, the crazy people. Uh, I feel like they're like a bit of tribes, you know, like they're like a bit more. Um, uh, how do you call it? Um, they're more like savages, I guess. Um, you know, like 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 dystopian savages, I guess. So, for example, um, I don't know. Uh, armor. I feel like they have armor, but it's like scrap metal and stuff. So. Uh, uh, maybe if like uh, they, they miss some limbs and they're like kind of have like cyborgs. Um, yeah, it would be cool to have something with sound. 
because we're one of we want to focus more on music in the coming months of Dread Labs, um, besides graphic design. So it would be cool to have something, uh, something with, that we can use for mu music, I guess. Okay, so these are the they they're like very muscular, I guess, because they have like uh, I know because they uh, because that the rain makes them yeah a bit like Max Ma Mad Max. Uh, so I think a bit like um, I don't know. They're uh, yeah they're because they're like in in intoxicated with with like the uh, the clouds with the, the the weird liquid. Let's just try to make an. Uh, the guys have a cool name for the li liquid, like uh, maybe like a scientific name, you know, like uh, I don't know. <laughs> I'm a bit clueless, but yeah, if, uh, let me know in the chat a really cool scientific name for uh, this liquid that we're keeping talking about it's in the clouds and it it, it has a purpose but if it, it but if you're exposed to it yourself it w you'll go insane that's like the the thing that we have so far okay I'm really bad at drawing hands so I'm not gonna do that now Okay, so this is where it breaks off. It's like a shoulder plate, this this thing here. Water. <laughs> Karens. Plasiline. I, I don't know, maybe maybe it's because I'm Dutch, but plus plus <laughs> means P in, uh, in Dutch. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> so maybe not that. So, <laughs> but like I like the where it's called it, like Aline. Uh, it, it, it makes it sound like the, it, it's used for medicine or something. Or drugs. Ooh, ooh. Wait, what if this? what if like in small dosages this liquid can also be drugs and like dystopic dystopian like underground rave scenes use the use it to make drugs is that a thing okay so we have the crazy people here and they're wearing Uh, sub one. Um, so uh, basically, we're we're uh, creating a ficti fictional world. We're creating uh, the world of Red Labs. So what we have so far is there's, uh, and we're going to use this for future uh, future projects like a clothing collection. Um, so yeah, we have like a uh, uh, the, the, there's a, like a big desert on the in, on the planet of Dread Labs, and there's like a bunker inside uh, with a uh, with a like high tech lab, and uh, they store a, they store a liquid, and the liquid is in the sky, and it, it, it rains from uh, they're like purple clouds in on the planet, which I'm gonna draw here real quick, um, and these clouds are. Uh, the liquid in this cloud, these clouds are being used in this lab, but they're also being used as drugs because if you're exposed to it, it will make you go insane. Okay, real quick. Oh right, cloud tears. These that's so cool. I uh, I hear also heard that the crocodile tears drugs are like the 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 hard, the worst drugs in the world or something, right? Like or the most hardcore drugs or something. Uh, could I create a custom? Sure, man. Um, so yeah, a lot of people have been asking me lately to do uh, logo types just like the one that I did in my glass type video with uh, the Xanax logo, I guess. Um, but to, to be completely honest, um, I like doing them, but I'm I feel like I'm not professional enough to to do like to tell you what to do and what not to do 
in terms of like actual visual um, yeah, visual rules when making logos and stuff so I guess I might have to do like a quick logo course to to talk about it a bit more but um So yeah, but but uh, yeah, but I uh, I can try to do some stuff, but um I'm I want to do more uh, like icon stuff in uh, in Illustrator, like the Rafe uh, graphics that I did earlier this week or last week, I guess. Okay, so these will be stored in here. Uh, okay, so we have a droplet. And these droplets. What are you calling them again? Uh, cloud tears. Cool. So we have the cloud tears here. And these can be stored in like a cool, like maybe like a little bottle. And like someone at a rave would give you like a like a droplet of this bottle, maybe like um. <laughs> Yo, who's the person behind you? He's funny as fuck. <laughs> what? <laughs> um. So yeah, uh, basically, these um. Uh, maybe like uh, I don't know how do you call it. Um, I don't know what they're called in English. Like when you have like these like little scientific uh, things where you can just like just drop a droplet of a liquid. You know, like uh, with like medicine shit. Like with with, with your eyes when you when your eyes are dry, you have the droplets. Um, yeah, I think I'm gonna model this. Like uh, we're gonna not model this in this stream, but I guess for for the next stream. Um, uh, yeah, so that would be cool to um, uh, yeah to to do something with, I guess. Maybe even to do it in like uh, like in real life or something, you know. Uh, I'm thinking uh, <laughs> there's a short guy with a hoodie behind you. Ah, uh, pipette, yeah, the eye drops thing. Okay, so I'm really confused by the what there's a short guy with a hoodie behind you. What are you talking about, bro? <laughs> um so yeah, when the scientists in the lab refine it, the liquid turns to the same color as the relish. Yeah, that would be cool. Like the the, 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 the unrefined version would be like this color. And then, yeah, I don't have the marker color for it, but you know, like the neon green color of Dreadlabs, it would be cool to have it like when it's refined, like when it's when it's clear or something, you know, like when it's filtered or something. Uh, so um, let's just sketch a little bottle of it. this I guess and there will be like a uh, I don't know They would they would like hang it around their uh, around their necks or something. That would be cool, I think, right? Uh, so I've been doing. Uh, Have I had panic attacks in the stream? Um, so how long have you been learning about Adobe?
Adobe software. Uh, I think since uh, actually, wait, uh, sorry, multiple questions. So, um, Uh, let me see. <laughs> uh, okay. So, uh, Adobe software. I think I started around in 2014. Yeah, so I've been doing Photoshop since 20, 2006, 2014, so six years. And then um, I think... Uh, Illustrator around three, three to four years now, and After Effects two years, and yeah, I don't really use InDesign that much, but I know the basics of it, uh, like Adobe XD for example, um, and then there's yeah Premiere, but I don't really use Premiere as well. I only to edit videos, but it's pretty basic, I guess. So yeah. Um, Okay, so there's a, the, the drug uh, dropper. Do we call it a dropper? A uh, cloud dropper or something? So there's like... So at the raves, they're hanging the, uh, the dropper around their necks. Uh, I'm 24. Uh, let me see. Oh, uh, so uh, Wolfgang, uh, I'm. Uh, that's actually not Helvetica. A lot of people think the, that the Dreadlap Sans is Helvetica, but it's actually uh, Nimbus Sans. So yeah. Um, uh, okay. So where were we? We had the droppers. I think we forgot something. Did I forgot something? So you get them at the raves. Uh, let me just ink them a little bit so you can see them better oh we have to like the when the, the refinement thing Right, so uh, when the scientists would refine it in the labs, then um, it would turn green, and maybe then that's when um, that's when the liquid would like uh, I don't know, maybe reverse the power or something, you know? this up uh, thanks so much Wolfgang really like uh, like to hear that um, so use dread left purple for the raw state okay yeah, so there's a, there's like a raw state and that this would actually be the, the dread labs purple. Uh, droplet S drugs. Let's see if I have like a green marker, but I don't think so, sadly. Well, not a little neon green marker. Um. Thanks, man. I uh, I like it too. It's uh it's really fun so far. Um. So yeah, uh, let's see. Let's just ske sketch this uh like the, the the crazy guys who are getting the liquid from the clouds. Uh, so maybe we can think about um. Uh, what was your question? Uh, I'm actually uh, looking at my iPad. I think for some reason some of the comments aren't uh, like filtering through. Um, 
so yeah um do you have any experience with photoshop as opposed to Wait, photo P as a. I actually, uh, uh, Wolfgang, I, I don't know what the, uh, that is. Is it like some uh, something like GIMP or something, like another uh, Photoshop uh, alternative? Um, so yeah, we have like a uh, maybe they have like a, a shard of something. some scrap metal and they have like a shoulder plate here uh, so it might it would be cool to to think about um, where uh, or how these these crazy people would um, get like the how do how do they go up in the sky and, and like catch the clouds I guess uh, okay so uh, I'm not really sure uh, about that um, so I before I worked in Photoshop, I used to work with Paint.net. I don't know if you guys know that. That's like basically also like a free alternative, but it's not online. It's just a, it's also software. Um, but yeah, it's uh, I, I've I know I've no idea how uh, Paint.net is actually doing. But like for what I was using it for when I was like under eighteen, it was alright, I guess. Uh, but now, like, uh, because like Photoshop was a little bit counterintuitive for me when I was used to Paint.net. But um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, okay, so uh, shoulder plate. something sticking out here yeah but I, I wonder what uh, paint on that is actually uh, yeah wh what are the guys up to who made it I guess is it still a thing does anyone know um, dude I'm not gonna answer these weird questions, man. This is a design channel, so please keep it re relevant to the topic. And because I'm uh, trying to get you removed, if you're gonna spam. Okay, so these guys are like super muscular. You know, maybe have like a. Uh... Should they have a, ro a robotic arm or not? I guess I don't. Th I don't think we should have a robotic arm, but maybe like something to, uh, like something like a jetpack or something. Uh, or yeah, did, yeah. Okay, everyone's saying yeah to the robotic arm. I guess. Um, you. Mechanized wheel. No, <laughs> that's be really cool. Okay, so I'm just I'm gonna do the robotic arm. It's a. Uh, I feel like it's spam because it's not relevant to what I'm doing. Like, uh, it's a design channel, you know. It's not really a. Uh, what do you call it? <laughs> I don't know. General, general channel, I guess. There's plenty of uh, YouTube channels for that, I guess. Some, it's always cool to have like cables uh, in between. So maybe here's like a larger part of the plate. The cable goes from here to here. Uh, let's see. Oh, what if the what if the robotic arm actually has a way to um, 
I don't know what if it actually the question actually has a way to of the the arm has actually has a way to to catch the 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 the, the clouds I guess or you know like um, because like in the clouds it would probably be like uh, what would you call it condense condensation uh, so maybe like a condensation alternative to its mechanical handle or something or maybe like a um, Oh, it's up bad vibe. Sorry. Um, so yeah, uh, the information is a little bit on the side of what world building is. We're using the world building exercise and we're creating a fictional world of dread labs um, to basically come up with cool ideas that we can later use for um, uh, basically like uh, merchandise collections or uh, I don't know, um, maybe musical albums, any everything basically. Uh, Wolfgang, really good question because uh, I feel like a lot of people are having, are having the same questions I guess because um, I started out with graphic design because I was a producer as well um, so basically uh, wait, let me ch check real quick some stuff so uh, sorry guys um, I deleted uh, the, the spam uh, I feel like it's a bit of distracting for my stream uh, no hard feelings, but it's just easier for me to uh, to keep to the actual relevant uh, live chat responses, I guess. Um, anyway, uh, it will be cool to uh, to keep it civil, you know. Don't fight in the chat, and we're all here with the same purpose: be positive, make some cool stuff, and yeah, don't don't make arguments or something. At least not in my live chat, I guess. <laughs> um, Okay, sorry, where were we? Oh yeah, the music thing. Um, so I actually started out as a producer um, and because I really like was into artworks of other artists and stuff, I tried to make stuff in Photoshop um, and I went to do events uh, and I did my own artworks and my own posters and everything and that's when I decided to do actually to make a career out of design. Uh, and eventually uh, design took over from music uh, and I kind of gave up on, on a musical career, but the fun thing with Dreadlabs is I can kind of get back into the music scene with this to when we create a, la create a label, do DJ live sets, uh, and I want to do producer sessions in the future as well. Um, so yeah, basically, um, it can really go hand in hand, but it's you got to find the right platform or the right way to express it, I guess. For example, I don't know if you guys know uh, Drulu. They're like a DJ or slash producer duo. And one of the guys actually produces, and one of the guys does all their visual uh, visual output, I guess. Uh, so that's a really cool combination of, yeah, the best of both worlds, I guess. Okay, back to the robotic arm. So I feel like the middle of this thing should be like a net. I don't know. I feel like we don't have enough lasers in this uh, in this live stream. I guess is that uh, if that makes sense. You know, it's always cool to have lasers in your live stream. Uh, so yeah, if if you guys maybe the jetpack has a laser. Should we? Uh... Okay, so this is the jetpack. I guess. Can you guys actually see the sketch really well? I feel like a uh, maybe I should start drawing bigger or maybe keep the camera a little bit closer. So I might be moving a camera. Uh, I've heard of bicep, but I uh, and I've heard some tracks, but uh, I couldn't like tell w if it was a track of them or something. Um, 
thanks Wolfgang you you seem like a really nice person as well and uh, it would be really cool I don't know if you're already on the discord but I uh, I would love to hear some uh, hear some music of you uh, if you would like to share so uh, yeah um, I recommend sharing some music on the discord and uh, it would be cool to uh, to check it out um, so uh, how do you put t-shirts on the website to buy um, okay so there are multiple ways to to uh, to put on t-shirts on the website but if the way that for me was really important as I wanted to uh, to have two main uh, important things for my t for my t-shirts um, I wanted it to be as eco-friendly as possible as well as I wanted to invest uh, I didn't want to invest a lot of money into it because uh, uh, I'm just starting out and my idea behind Dreadlabs is I'm only investing the money that's coming from Dreadlabs, if that makes sense. So for example, I pay the hosting of the website with the revenue that I get from products that I host on my website. I uh, pay my recording equipment with the revenue that I get from YouTube recordings or something, you know? Um, so the website is not coded, it's done in WordPress and WooCommerce. But um, yeah, th so uh, there's this uh, website called Printful and they uh, basically, you can integrate it into your uh, Word WordPress web shop. And once you guys place an order, uh, they essentially start producing it for you. So uh, why this is nice for me or for small business owners, I don't have to. I don't have to buy 100 T-shirts to. Um, <clears throat> uh, yeah, exactly. Bad vibe. Um, so yeah, it's just, it's. Um, so like for example, let's say you would order a T-shirt. I would. I wouldn't have to buy like 50 T-shirts in different sizes and send one of them to you and have this bulk laying here, uh, not being bought. Uh, so what's nice about this is that. Um, I don't have to buy it, so it doesn't have to be shipped to me first before I ship it to you. So I don't have a yeah, it's it's print on demand exactly. Um, so yeah, I don't have a inventory or something, and that's uh, I I th I just think it's really nice to. Uh, I feel like a lot of brands should. I, I know like for a lot of custom stuff, print on demand is probably really hard to do, but um, I think it's really good for your environment and your environment, and f especially for like starting. Um, starting entrepreneurs or starting companies it's nice to uh, to have this alternative and yeah you don't have to spend a lot of money to uh, and there's also a big downside of course and that's I don't really earn a lot of the t-shirt I don't I, I don't make a lot of money on the t-shirts <laughs> but that, that's fine you know <laughs> uh, so yeah I'm really lagging on this this uh, should, should it have a mask wait, wait, wait. okay so first lasers Um, and then, okay, very important part, what should their masks look like? Um, so, uh, as far as I know, the, the, the only way that I really researched it was that printing on demand is actually eco-friendly, so I'm, I'm not sure if the the printing itself is that eco-friendly, but um, the company that I work with is Printful, and it's uh, it's uh, just a really li like nice, uh, approachable company to to start out with, I guess. Uh, let's do some some like maybe some tribal influence stuff. Uh, not not that symmetric, symmetrical, but it's a sketch, eh? Uh, so these are like the crazy people that live uh, here. Uh, wait, you can't, can you see that? Wait, let me just... So 
the, the, the guy with the jetpacks are living here and they're flying upwards and getting it here. Um, Oh, that's so nice. It's a, uh, I, I, yeah, that would be really cool. <laughs> it's really cool to have this on the background, the gas world, uh, while working. Um, yeah, that's a really cool, uh, cool alternative to, uh, to, to do it, I guess. <laughs> um, let's see, maybe something that kind of looks like a set. Ooh, that's cool. Uh, definitely, man. A set face. Um, Let me just see if I can do this actually right this time. <laughs> Sorry guys, I was a little bit distracted about the chat earlier uh, with like the, well, I guess kind of spam, spammy messages. Weren't really spam, but <laughs> I, 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 get easy, I get distracted really easy. Yeah, uh, so uh, the only thing that I'm like, kind of uh, uh, still need an explanation for is why do they do this dirty work like do the scientists give them the parts of the drugs back so they can use it or uh, maybe they're under mind control or something um, so uh, Matthias uh, I used to stream on like both uh, YouTube and Twitch simultaneously um, but f yeah, for some reason, uh, some like, um, I don't know, uh, <laughs> weird stuff happened while, uh, with the, I don't know, the colors of my screen on uh, Twitch and, I was, and most of the people are watching on YouTube anyways. And when they found out it's both on YouTube and Twitch simultaneously, they jumped to YouTube. Um, a visor like Georgie LaForge from Star Trek or site. Ooh, that would be cool as well. Uh, it's so the the visor. Let's just do that for the scientists because it's a bit more high tech and would be cool, right? Um, okay, so it's a. Uh, I don't know if I want to keep the mask like this. Maybe a little bit more normal, like the the, the comedy tragedy masks, I guess. Um, Uh, and then because it's like they're like kind of like uh, savages I guess Let, let's just have them like really wild hair a little bit of uh, anime hair I guess <laughs> a bit like uh, Joey Wheeler from Yu-Gi-Oh <laughs> Well, you would like have a, like a really big like uh, thing to the side here, like this. Um, so yeah, but but uh, yeah, let's write these. But then we need like a reason why these, uh, why 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 uh, are the savages actually doing it for the? Why should the savages work for these scientists? Like, are they? Uh, do the scientists uh, have mind control over them, or do they get money for it? Yeah, I guess these guys don't really care about money because they're like too, too run down for it. But um, yeah, let, let me know if there's like a cool way to. Ooh, what if we can kind of combine like the the plague masks, but then with like a futuristic cyborg Pfizer on it. Uh, sub broken uh, so we do something like <laughs> this is gonna look so derpy I think but I <laughs> um, so let's see if I can do it like this from the front or something uh, so I think this will be like one of those things that I would try to model first instead of like after my sketch immediately because 
yeah, it's a bit. Ooh, that's a really cool one. So the ha the savages are always like super like depressed and angrier and sad. Uh, yeah, yeah. So the savages are working for them because they have they they the doctors have like a a drug, the and I th yeah the drug and that's like the the dread lab screen. So that's the refined version of this, and then. The uh, the refined version of this makes them happy. Uh, makes them happy for a short while. Uh, and so, so, uh, so they just want to find find that happiness, and they're like basically addicted to it, like 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 drugs. And that's why they they do it because it's they give they're giving it back to them, I guess. We're creating a whole ecosystem here, guys. Okay, so I don't know why, but I, I have you guys seen the Star Wars episodes from Family Guy where the chicken is Boba Fett? <laughs> the mask keeps reminding me of this. So I might just save up the idea. Visor. Plague. Mask. And I'm going to model this later. <laughs> So the drug's name is uh, where we have where do we have it? It's called Cloud uh, uh, Cloud Tears. Uh, <laughs> I guess we're we're, uh, we're getting into this way further than I was expecting. I love it. I, I it's 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 so good so far. Um, okay, so quick recap on the story so far. Dreadlabs Planet has a big desert. Where there's like a um <laughs> I'm gonna do a lore book. Um so okay, a quick recap. There's this big planet where th there's this planet uh, in the Dreadlabs universe where there's like a, a like a savage wasteland, uh, because it's like kind of post apocalyptic. And in the desert there's like a confined um uh, lab. And uh, it's airtight, and there are people there wearing uh, the plague masks. The scientists. We'll call them the scientists for now. And the scientists, uh, they can't go outside because outside there are purple clouds. Uh, with uh, And exposing yourself to these clouds uh, uh, will make you insanely depressed to the point where you go insane. Hence the savages. The savages, they live... Uh, in the wastelands, so they're exposed to this com completely. Um, and to to get cured, what they do is they they have ways to fly up to the clouds and catch the uh, the condense of the clouds. Um, while uh, and they bring it back to the scientists, and the scientists can make a drug out of it, which makes them insanely happy for a short while. Which gives them this insane moment of highness. Uh, high, that, that doesn't sound right. They'll get a they'll get a big boost from it, I guess, uh, in, in in terms of positivity. And by doing this, uh, and that's why they keep doing this. That's why the scientist keeps bringing it to them. But the real we reason the scientists are actually using this is to uh, to refine this and sell the. Uh, okay, so yeah, and then. The scientists they can uh, split uh, and refine this liquid, and then the liquid, uh, so the cloud, it can turns to this green uh, droplet, which will make them happy. But uh, the rest of it uh, will get uh, the residue, I guess, uh, will make you well. Uh, will make you like a little bit happy and it gets sold as drugs and this is the whole reason why these scientists are using this so uh, the, the to to sell the drugs because that's how they keep funding their projects okay we have it guys <laughs> super cool I can definitely this could even be like a video game or something you know um, so yeah, we can do so many cool things uh, out of this. Um, 
let's just see uh, okay one more thing that I would like to do is go a little bit further into the drugs part of it where the the raves are starting because that's a little bit focused more around music uh, and uh, it would be cool to have like a uh, to have this story involved with music so we can do something with music and dreadlops in the future um, so let's see uh, there are underground raves <clears throat> I don't know what this is we really should make a movie man <laughs> that would be cool okay so there's like a stage okay big green screen or some big visuals DJ speakers This doesn't really. Okay, this doesn't really. Do I like car? Uh, I don't know who that is. Car Young. Is that a DJ? So the, the the speakers are, I guess, the same height as the the, the room. And there's thousands of people in here. their hands up because it's a rave and they're all happy um. <laughs> yeah it kind of feels like that doesn't it Matthias um. so uh, okay <laughs> this is gonna be fun guys I can't wait to uh, to actually like start doing stuff with this <laughs> like uh, I can already imagine like uh, the, having the 3d model of a savage and then uh, I don't know like uh, how do you call this? this the suits where they track your motion and like we're doing a DJ set and you're like uh, and you see like a visual of the savage in the background it would be really cool um so okay um so this is now this is just like a normal rave but there there should be something uh about this rave that makes it what 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 does a rave look like in the world of dread labs uh, uh, so psychophonic I actually uh, want to try to learn that ZBrush and Dash Studio so m I might try one of them out to uh, to model this because I've never used them before but um, yeah um, so yeah what would these uh, raves what would they look like what, what, like uh, imagine yourself in this world uh, and you'll be going into this rave what 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 would what would we what would it be there? Yeah, what would it be like? What would, would it look like? What uh, you know like uh, what would be different from a dread lapse? Uh, what what would be different between a, a real life where a rave and a dread lapse uh, world rave? I guess. Uh, let me know in the chat because I'm really curious. Um, let's see. I feel like there should be. No, not really violence. I don't really like like violence. Um, 
shockwave from the speakers that sounds super cool okay that was that, that's exactly what i was looking for so um okay let's say the floor is made out of some something i know uh the, the floor is made out of a material Ooh, they're upside down okay Ooh, okay okay uh, i have some ideas okay let's say this is the, the ceiling uh and okay, this is really ugly but uh let's say this is like a floor ceiling and what if the uh like the there's like a force field or something on on the walls and on the ceiling and everywhere and the dj is just playing here And people can just run over the walls with like shockwaves. So, for example, uh, there's people like uh, on the walls here dancing, and I don't know. Jumping up and down, so there's li like there's like no gravity or something, you know. Uh, and the floor will be definitely like a uh, yeah, like some really weird. Uh, oh, I, I I can't wait to make this in three D. Like uh, it has it has some weird colors going through it because it like it's like they're all like force fields and stuff. So basically, the f all the walls and the ceiling and stuff are like visuals. But there's uh, but they also uh, make sure that it's all zero gravity, you know. Uh, Ooh, and, 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 and like at, at the edge, there's like a tank of with the cloud tears or something, you know, like uh, and just pumps through through like a uh, like gas, yeah, really cool. Um, uh yeah cool okay so uh and so at these raves this this drug is getting getting sold as droplets so you get like one little drop and then uh i guess like uh oh okay so this droplets the drugs like they're residue of the the scientific process right so uh what this uh what if this this the residue uh, either gives you like insane happiness or insane sadness and you don't know what it's going to be before you take it so that's like kind of like the rush of it you know like you don't know what's going to happen when you take it that's like why people take it as drugs is that does that make sense uh and also yeah the dj has to be in chains <laughs> like the dj's feet are like uh they have like cool sick ass sneakers uh i don't know Like this, like uh, futuristic Balenciagas or something, and they're tied down with a chain. Can you live stream your process in creating 3D? Um, so Psycho, I actually have uh, well one live stream on the basics of Cinema 4D, and well, uh, the most of my live streams, so the like the longer videos of an hour or longer, uh, they all involve Cinema 4D, uh, and there's also one especially uh, for Cinema 4D for graphic designers. Um, ooh. Like some kind of like super futuristic silent disco or something. Um, well, I like the idea of like the the music sending like shock waves. So um, maybe there's a way that we can use the shock waves from the music 
and combine it with like the music coming from their mind or something. Ooh, that would be cool, Jordan. So the music is actually like just inside their head and they can just like turn it off. But like it's instead of like being it loud in the room, it's visual. It's, it's really visually apparent. Like, uh, I don't know. Like, yeah, like the Northern Lights. Really cool. <laughs> Imagine, like, uh, in, I don't know, when Corona's over, we would throw, like, an actual rave like this. Imagine that would be possible. That would be really cool. Um, so, yeah. Uh, DJ Chain Down. Uh, what was it called? With the cables. Ooh, what if the DJ is, like, a... Uh, feel like I, I should like the DJ should be like a cool robot or something with like uh, cables coming through his arms or something you know so uh, no, like his hands will be like this and the cables will be plugged in his head like this Type out the Discord link here real quick. Just a sec. How's the music scene in the Netherlands for music? Um, so that's a really cool question, actually, because uh, obviously, obviously, right now the music industry or the music scene in the Netherlands is kind of uh, uh, yeah dead due to COVID uh, and stuff. Um, but to be fair, uh, my best clubbing experience was in Germany, actually, uh, when I traveled to Boat's House. I was really into bass music, and I saw like uh, I don't know if you guys know them, uh, Kezo and Slander right there, but. Um, the most of the cool club scenes and the cool parties in the Netherlands are basically like concerts from DJs uh, hosting their own nights. So there aren't really like a lot of clubs um, where I guess there aren't really like a lot of clubs where they regularly play like the music that I like uh, because it's more most of the clubs here, uh, especially like I don't really live in the city. I live in like a quite a small town. So the clubs here used to play like uh, really like generic music and well yeah that's not really my thing like i get the appeal but it's not my thing <laughs> um yeah jordan uh, jordan will explain it a little bit better in the in the live chat because he's also from the netherlands and we uh we share a little bit of uh our music taste <laughs> um oh wait uh, let me see uh, or you can hear the music only if they take the drug. That's a cool idea. Uh, the closer they are to the music, the drugs get stronger. And are. Yeah, that's yeah. I want I want I want it to be all connected in a way. I guess that's really cool, guys. Thank you so much for this input. Um, if if like for example we would do like a uh, visual show a reel based on all of your ideas uh, that we did in the stream today, uh, I will go back to this chat and I will link all of you guys in the credits. Uh, because it's been really fun so far and it's super helpful and it's just uh, a really chill time you know uh, so let me just check if we can draw like a an actual cool robot
like this. And Portugal, um, I guess the the music scene. Well, yeah, they only, uh, there's a lot of Dutch people always going on holiday to uh, Albufeira in uh, Portugal, and I guess it's yeah, it's, it also has like a lot of I think generic music, right? Um, I I feel like uh, a lot of the places in Europe are just. Uh, I feel like uh, a lot of the cool electronic d dance scenes in general are like a bit a little bit more underground. It would be so cool to like open a uh, club that all always has like uh, different types of music styles, and it's like the concept of a club would be there's never any like generic music, I guess. That makes sense. So there's always something for people that are in, into a little bit more specific kinds of um, yeah kinds of uh, stuff, I guess. Okay, so this will be like a little bit of a, maybe like a hologram, like this part of its body. And the head is floating and only connected to the cables. That's kind of cool, right? Um, so yeah, guys, we're uh, almost 90 minutes in and um, I am going to finish this up in about 10 minutes, I guess, because... Um, uh, my family uh, is having a, a game night uh, downstairs, so I promised that I would uh, end the stream just a little bit early so I can join them. <laughs> um, so yeah, I, uh, I'm going to do that in just 10 minutes or something. Um, so basically, you plug this robot in, I guess. His arms in. I feel like uh, shouldn't the drugs be illegal, like in the rules of this dreadlabs world, or should we? Um, let's see. Yeah, it might be better to have the drug react stronger to the music instead of the other way around. Otherwise, the this these raves are revolving around the drugs, which would be illegal, I guess. <laughs> I guess it's also the same way in real life, but I don't know. <laughs> uh, okay, so we have the tank here, and maybe this is like a different kind of liquid, you know, like. Uh, Maybe this is just like a different kind of ir iridescent or holographic liquid. And then um, the the holographic liquid is actually what makes the like the aurora. Uh, or aurora waves or whatever to call them. Um, so I like the savage is producing something bootleg um, but the mm, if they would produce their own do, doesn't that take up the reason why they're getting the in the, in the first place or not um What if, what if, what if, what if? It's so cool, I love the ideas, guys. It's, uh, it's, it's uh, becoming more, and you know, I, I, I feel like uh, once we're getting into the zone, everyone gets a little bit of a creative drive. Uh, so that's really cool. Um, 
let's see. So what we have now on, like, let's say this is the desert. Then there's like big cities, but these cities would probably also be underground, right? But there would be like a, uh, like a gray concrete like ceiling. So the, 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 the cities will always be underground, right? Um, okay, cool. Um, okay, so completely different thing for uh, just in the last 10 minutes. What would like jobs be in these cities? Like what will people do for, do in a, on a daily basis in these cities? Uh, do people work? And if so, what are their jobs or what do they do in their free time? Uh, yeah, I, I feel like it's cool to to also get a little bit into that because uh, that's that's the importance of world building. Like uh, you can't just ignore uh, like I guess bigger parts of uh, of what the world is about because then the story could clash or you know you get inconsistencies or something. And there might be also an obviously like some cool stuff that we can find out about like the inhabitants of the city. Um, Oh, I like the idea of mining. Uh, <laughs> cloud chasing. So what if we... Um, yeah, the, the, like mines would be cool. Okay. Jobs. I don't know if you guys play Borderlands, um, but I get, I'll also get some really... Uh, in Borderlands 2, you have like uh, Iridium mining, and it's like a uh, also like a stone, I guess, or an ore. And uh, the byproduct of iridium is slag, and it kind of like uh, it, it, it kind of goes back to like the cloud stuff, I guess. Cool, uh, because it's my favorite game. Uh, so yeah, it's, it's cool to actually see this uh, orga come up organically, I guess. Um, but I guess uh, to make it a little bit less similar than Borderlands, uh, it would be cool to have another kinds of ores in the in the ground um, so scavenging scavenging what exactly um, yeah let's see like for example would there be like offices with big companies in the, in these cities or is it just um, you know like uh, are there like sophisticated people living in these cities or are it just like because the savages live like I feel like the savages live like in the deserts, like up top. So they they're not a be a able to live in the city because they will contaminate everyone. Um, uh, yeah. The, so the the uh, the upper. Uh, so I don't know how to say it in English. But so the the whole planet is basically like covered in like a like a desert and like sandstorms and stuff. Really, really harsh. Uh, but and it's inhabited by savages. And there are a lot of cities, but the cities are like underground, like they're uh, like kind of like bunkers. Uh, and in, for example, let's say that we have a map. Let's say that this is like a map of like one of these giant deserts. Um, so, for example, there would be like a city here. And there's like branches that go out. So, the and these the cities are all underground. And these branches are probably like where the mines are, so um, yeah. The because like the the ores in the the city underneath the city itself are already like mined up, so they need branches to to mine a bit more, I guess. In uh, in yeah, further away from the city, and then <clears throat> and then. Um, like very remotely, like far away from these cities, there's like these labs. And those are the dread labs. Like th th those are where the scientists live. Yeah, so it would be cool to have like the science scientists uh a bit like uh, based on what you're saying, Matthias, it would be cool to have the science scientists. They're like um, maybe not not like um, like a company as especially, but like a, like an Illuminati. Like they're like everyone kind of knows they exist, but and they control the society. But like they're more like 
in the background yeah you know they're like far away from the city um they're there you, you can't really reach them because like for example this would be like to the other side of the other planet or something you know um yeah you know something like that i guess but um but it would be cool to have like a company that acts like it's on top like the an actual actually company centered in the city and maybe it's um what if what if the company uh that actually like acts like it's ruling the city is like doing the raves or something um Would I uh, want to make a class or... Uh, this is actually a cool uh, question. Um, and that might be cool to do, but I guess I would start doing that once uh, once we actually also would have a story. Because this is obviously like a story world, but there's not really like a, a story yet, you know? Like we're just defining what's happening here. Trading, maybe everything is in districts underground above called tribes try to go to adventure above oh that's cool that's a cool idea so yeah the, the, the traders will be like uh they will be like the middleman between the city and the and like the wastelands or, or something <laughs> the illuminati could be called hyperion <laughs> handsome jack would be uh director of hype uh, of the illuminati then <laughs> um Okay, so what el what else? The w what what kind? Would there be maybe there could be like animals in the desert or like mutated animals or something? That would also also be cool. Um, I don't know. I guess uh, after ninety minutes, I'm kind of like uh, you know. Uh, I'm running a little bit dry but that's okay we we've done a lot of cool stuff in the last 90 minutes um, so uh, I guess let's just do a recap of what we have and then uh, I'll be on my way and uh, I want to do this uh, another time in the near future and I want to like continue to build on this um, so uh, guys, I'm actually gonna do what I'm actually gonna do as well is I'm gonna make another channel in the Discord, uh, and that's solely for this world building. So if you guys have any ideas like tomorrow or something, you can just go into the Discord and drop your ideas there. Um, so, uh, oh, you mean Avatar like the movie or Avatar: The Last Airbender? Um, Ooh, also really cool to think about what the effect would have, what the liquid effect would have on animals. And, um, so yeah, uh, I'm going to do this on the, uh, I'm going to make a uh, part on the Discord where we can discuss this uh, off stream. And then we can bring it into next stream because I really like doing this and I hope you guys like it too. Um, and I think it would be fun to... To have you guys, I have the same guys, uh, I have the same people that were with me today, uh, go into the next stream and then, you know, like, uh, see where to go from here and maybe, I don't know, uh, let's see what we could come up with in six months or something, you know, that would be really cool. Um, but yeah, uh, oh yeah, I've actually, I've seen it like, uh, like a long time ago. Uh, so it might be uh, a, good, a good idea to, uh, I don't know, to watch it again. <laughs> And uh, yeah, so uh, guys, I just want to I just want to thank you so much for uh, watching, having you take your time on this Saturday. Uh, well, for me, it's a Saturday evening. Uh, I don't know what time it is for you, uh, but yeah, thank you so much for um, for joining me today in this uh, really fun world building session. Um, let's just go over it one more time. Uh, so we have the, the world of Dread Labs, uh, and it's a uh, dystopian planet. Uh, it's mainly like wa desert wastelands, uh, and the sky is contaminated with a purple uh, liquid or gas, um, <clears throat> which for now is the name cloud, the clouds. And these clouds are being, uh, they, they make people extremely depressed. And uh, so there's a group of scientists, and they live in a bunker. Uh, and they are able to they they're being they are able to 
um, uh, to make you um, I don't know they're, they're they're able to make you uh, yeah they, they they were able to convert it into green liquid and the green liquid can make you insanely happy and there's a byproduct when doing this uh, and uh, it can make you either insanely happy or insanely sad and it's being used as drugs which is the main income of these scientists and the way the liquid gets to the scientists is by the savages that roam the uh, desert land and uh, they're basically so insane but they are doing it for the high that they get from the medicine that the scientists produce and the scientists want them to to get the cloud for them so they can sell more drugs and earn more money and this is also the same group of people that is extreme that's actually uh, secretly ruling the dreadlabs world on the background so these drugs are uh getting used a lot in this these uh no uh, these uh raves that are being held in the big cities and these big cities have um the raves there are uh like super visual there's like uh, uh a lot of colorful gas through the uh, going through the rooms uh, there's no gravity there so you can jump on every part of the room uh, which uh, is done by like a holographic kind of electro electromagnetic field which is also like super like fluorescently visual um, and DJ is a robot that's actually like immune to the gravity and can plug its arms into the uh, to the uh, tabletops to play music um, and then there's people there and uh, in the cities and they mostly mine ores we have not defined yet what these ores also do um, and then there's also uh, traders and they're like uh, their job is to trade stuff between the savages and the city people so they're like a middleman there um, so yeah that's what we have so far Thanks again for a really fun night. Uh, I really enjoyed doing this, so uh, I guess we're gonna do more of this. Uh, we might in the next stream we might do like a new world building session, or we're gonna do a little bit of visualizing about the stuff that we had uh, today. Uh, so we might jump into Cinema 4D and do some masks. Uh, we might refine some sketches or do some poster designs for the raves. I don't know. Let's just see where we go, where to go from here. Uh, anyway, guys, thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, I hope you have a great weekend uh, and I'll see you guys in the next stream. Thank you so much and bye.